Hey everyone, it's Mr. A here, and I'm going to do a quick video for you on how to translate a figure, like a triangle, along a vector. I've got two triangles here, so we'll do one going down and to the right, and another one going up and to the left. I, I wasn't paying attention to the what's going to show up on the video, so I made this vector a little bit too long. So this vector over here is just going to start at that point and go to that tip. We can just go ahead and disregard the rest of this piece over here, whatever you can see. So let's start with this triangle on the left here, triangle ABC. If I want to move triangle ABC along this vector, then what I essentially need to do is construct a parallelogram with this vector being one side and the other side being an equivalent length line coming from C that's parallel to this vector. So I essentially want to move this vector up to part C. Now this is pretty easy to do because all we need to do to construct a parallelogram is construct a quadrilateral with both pairs of opposite sides congruent. So one of the sides that we have, our parallelogram, if you can imagine, is going to be the left and the right, and then the vector will make the top and the bottom. At least that's how I see it, left, right, top, bottom. You might want to switch those. It doesn't make any difference. I'll start by measuring from the vector over to point C. This would be what I'm calling the left-hand side of my vector. So that length of my parallelogram, that length has to be the same as the length from the tip of the vector on this side. Right? So that's going to be my left and right side of my parallelogram. The other length I need to use is the length of the vector itself. So if I put the compass on the tip of the vector, and I can open up the other end to the base, so there's the length of my vector right there, that has to be the same from point C. So right there is going to be my intersection. So what I've just done is guarantee that the length of this vector is duplicated over here between C and this point. So I'm going to go ahead and draw that in, and I'll do it dotted, because this isn't necessarily part of the construction, but it's illustrated to see this. So that is parallel to and congruent to my vector, which already should make it a parallelogram. But what's going on here is that we've got it congruent on this side. Let me just get that right. And we've got this side over here. Same thing. Okay. So by construction, the vector is congruent to this red piece. This piece is congruent to this piece. And so that point is going to form a parallelogram. A quadrilateral with both pairs of opposite sides congruent is a parallelogram. And as a bonus, I now know exactly where point C prime is, because C has to be translated along that vector to C prime. So I can go ahead and mark that C prime and continue with my construction. Now I left my compass open to the vector. You can see it's still that same length, because I know that not just C, but also A and B have to move along the same distance. So I'm going to bring my compass over to A, and I'll go ahead and just put a mark there. Somewhere along there needs to be A prime. I'm going to go ahead and put my compass on B and put a mark there. Somewhere along there needs to be my B prime. The only question is where? Well, I know where C prime is, and I know that the distance from A to C can't change during this construction because a translation is an isometry, isometry, same distance, right? So I'm going to measure from A to C. It's actually very close to the length of my vector in this case. So there's from A to C, and I know that that distance from A to C has to be the same after the translation. So I go to C prime, and that's going to tell me where A prime is, right there. I'm going to do exactly the same thing between C and B. So I know that the distance from C to B has to remain the same before and after my construction. So there's my compass opened up to CB. I'm going to take that length, bring it over to C, and now just make an X there. And I've got all three points. So this would be B prime right here. This would be C prime right there. And I can go ahead and construct, well, draw at this point, my new triangle. Triangle A prime, B prime, C prime. And as I'm saying that, I realize that I labeled one of those points, well, two of those points C. Clearly one of them should have been A. So that is not a C prime. That is an A prime. So I'll just go ahead and fix that. Now, as always, I'm going to do a visual inspection. This is an isometry, which means this triangle should be congruent to this triangle. And it looks pretty good. If it looked strange, then I would know one of these marks was off and I must have gotten confused at some distance. So I'm going to do exactly the same thing over here with triangle DEF, but I'm going to translate it along that vector, so up and to the left. I'm going to start the same way. I'll measure between this point at the bottom of the vector and point F on the triangle. This is going to be my right-hand side of my parallelogram. I'm going to make sure that the left-hand side is equivalent. So somewhere there is going to be the left-hand side of my parallelogram. I also know that the length of the vector, my bottom side of the parallelogram, has to be the same as my top side. So I'm going to take that length, 
bring it over here to F. And I'm going to make an arc. And right there, I've constructed the same parallelogram as over here by making sure the opposite sides were congruent. So I'll go ahead and put these in dashed red again just so we can see visually what's happening, although again, not officially part of the construction. All right? So that line is congruent. F goes to there. This goes to the tip of the vector over here. Let's see. Right. And again, just to drive it home, this, oh well, sorry, that's parallel, this is congruent to this, and this is congruent to this. That's what guarantees us that this is a parallelogram, which means that is where F prime is going to go, right there at that intersection. Now I'm going to do the same thing. I still have my compass open to the length of the vector, which has to translate E the same distance, and has to translate D the same distance. So I know E needs to be somewhere on there, or E prime, and DE somewhere on there. I'm just going to use known distances to find where. I know where F prime is, so if I measure from F to E in the original triangle, that has to be the same as F prime to E prime. So I'm going to take that distance, bring it over to F prime, X marks the spot, and I'll do exactly the same from F to D. Measure out the original FD distance, right? So can you see that there? From F to D, that has to be the same as from F prime to D prime. X marks the spot. Once again, I can now go ahead and connect all the dots, and I'm now drawing in the final translated triangle. The construction part is over. I'm now just connecting dots so that we can see the result of our construction. And there we have point F prime. That's, of course, E prime. And that, of course, would be D prime. And that's all there is to it. Translating a triangle or any polygon is simple. If you had a pentagon, you would just have five points. You're going to still move the vector to the first point and then translate each other point in addition. I hope that helps. Check out the other videos and let me know if you have any questions. Have a great day.